there, and welcome to UFC Connected. I'm your host, Megan O'Levy, and here's what's coming up on today's show. Islam Makashev revisits his roots in the mountains of Dagestan. Kevin Lee explains how a challenging 2020 made him better than ever. I've always seen myself as a UFC champion, and now it's time to realize it. And Vicente Luque names his top five Brazilian finishers. He's my favorite fighter, and he has great finishes, so he has to be in the list. Islam Makachev joins a recent wave of contenders to emerge from the Russian Republic of Dagestan. Proudly representing his people in the octagon, Islam aims to follow in the footsteps of longtime friend Habib Nurmagomedov and bring home that UFC gold. For many fighters from the region, including Islam, combat sports were a part of growing up, and that background pays dividends today. Islam tells us more about his upbringing as we head to his home village for origins. Islam Mahashev has all the skills. His ability all across every area in mixed martial arts is second to none. Когда начинал все вот в ММА именно, у меня была цель не стать там чемпионом и все. Представлять нашу республику, нашу страну, это то, за что я дерусь. He was the first guy at the gym with Habib back in the day. And he spent a ton of time with Habib's dad before he passed away. And he is now ready to show that he can be the next contender in the lightweight division. I'm born in Dagestan, Mahachkala, but all my life I live here in this village. Salam alaikum, Zilla, but Salam alaikum, the Gadikan nation. Now, what Kadata Prijaj, Mahachkali, Gore, who Mesna Hribat, Bula Kakoita Panate, Sto, what Gardski, Tipa Slabi, and Shot Takoi, Pastanas, and Chasta Prahadios, Tam Dratsa, Pastai, the Sibaza, Kota Tam Druga. Ну, всегда тут в чем отличие здесь, вот именно это, наверное, и в горах. Вот ты подрался с кем-то, ты с ним наслежден, что вы уже самые близкие друзья. Есть тут, знаете, огромные камни, камни и глыбы, которые за несколько километров их на спине, на горбу сюда сощили. Ну, это э, корни из наших прадедов, есть тоже вот наш народ такой, вот физически развитый, они умственные, вот оттуда вот это... Это работа, то, что здесь там что-то строить, копать, собирать, там сено, ходить тоже скатоводство, это тоже какой-то физический труд. Значит, тут вот уже это в генах как-то заложено у нас. В горах мы качались вот камнями, бегали часто в горы, бывало даже три раза в день мы бегали в горы, просто вот камнями качались. Такие тяжелые условия создают настоящих мужчин. Название села, что вся... Весь мир уже знает наше селение, Бурши, то, что он смог это сделать. Ну, я всегда спортом увлекался. И вот смотрел на каких-то больших звезд. Там Кейбат, Кен Шермак, вот такие бойцы, вот на них смотрел, думал, это... Я понял, вот именно ММА, что это мое, когда я выиграл по боевому самбо. И вот так как-то у меня вот зародилась по жизни вот любая игра у нас как до победного бывает. Даже помню первые их шаги в спорте Ислама, Хабиба. Они постоянно конкурировали между собой, боролись, там, занимались вместе все время, друг другу помогали. Узнал, что Хабиб тренируется у своего отца. И я пришел в зал, увиделся с Хабибом. Так можно тоже буду ходить. И начали где-то... И ислам с соседом дворе жил, и мы там на тренировках. И учились еще в одном школе, 
В одной школе тренировались, в одном зале. И вообще с детства, в общем, сколько, почти 20 лет мы знакомы. Три минуты! И время показало, что он на самом деле хочет стать не просто там рядовым чемпионом, он хочет выделиться среди них. Вот сейчас сразу нападай, нападай сразу. Я думаю, если бы не было у него такого духа, он бы не достиг бы таких высот. Но в этом плане у него еще запас, еще полностью он себя даже. Долго стоите, долго стоите. Я помню, он любителя хотел выиграть там чемпионат мира. Он, он достиг этого, он выиграл чемпионат мира, и сейчас он хочет завоевать пояс. И я думаю, что когда-то он привезет домой этот поезд, как привез один из наших однокубников. UFC lightweight champion Khabib Nurmagomedov. This guy dominates people in a way that we have never seen before in the UFC. For my money, this is a legend in his own right. I want to say thank you for my father. Ну, отец всегда нам говорил, ну, ты когда будешь уходить, Ислам должен прийти. Another one of these great fighters from Dagestan, Russia. In Russian powerhouse, Islam Makhashev. You realize that Islam is every bit of the fighter as Habib. Habib не только как тренер, да, он ему и как брат. Мне кажется, стойка он медленный на руках. Я хочу, чтобы ты его стойка... Тренера обычно тренирует, тебя выставляют на соревнования, но он занимался всем и... Может, кто-то это называет тренерством, кто-то называет это там братством. А мне главный результат. This guy is a killer. That's some high-level grappling right there. You see why Makhachev is among the most avoided guys in this division. And a lot of people think we are looking at a future contender, if not champion, in Makhachev. Ну, иншалла, дай бог, мы никогда не знаем, что завтра будет. Ислам понимает, что ему самому надо. Со своего пути всех соперников. Вот и все. А вот этот Ислам прошел вот этот путь. И тренировался, ездил, выигрывал, доказывал это дело. Весь Дагестан за них болеет. Все ночью никто не спит. У экранов сидят, у экранов и болеют. В отдаленных краях, там, где даже нет интернета, стараются сюда в город приехать, чтобы посмотреть, поболеть за Ислам. Сейчас Ислам является одним из лучших бойцов мира среди всех бойцов. Вот сейчас у Ислама вот такое время. Я думаю, что это все оправдается скоро еще. Как он начинал, у него были мечты. Ждем, не дождемся, когда он станет чемпионом. Когда ты видишь, что столько людей за тобой следят, болеют, радуются, когда ты выигрываешь, там ты будешь следующим. Это большая ответственность. Ты должен понимать, должен знать, что ты не можешь их всех поднести. Следят за этим. Twenty twenty was a devastating year for many around the globe, and lightweight contender Kevin Lee certainly sustained its wrath. A main event loss to future champ Charles Oliveira was followed by a string of career-threatening injuries and personal hardships. But rather than succumbing to the setbacks, Lee used them as fuel. His goal: to return to the form that saw him challenge for a UFC title back in 2017. This always game survivor reflects on his roller coaster ride of a year, both in and out of the octagon, in Fighter Focus. My career has been a complete learning lesson. It's something for me to take into the next phase and just realize now I'm an experienced vet in a young body. Up until this point, I've had a lot of potential, but I have yet to realize it. Well, Kevin Lee gave up a promising wrestling career to pursue MMA full-time, and if the results are any indication so far, he made the right decision. There's been a lot of ups and downs in my career. I've got a lot of fights in the UFC. At the beginning, I'm a freshman going up and up and up, just starting the, the climb. Not even in his peak yet, but shows all these signs of greatness. Coach Fallis was a large part of my success. Hands up, a little bit of motion. Let's get those feet moving, Kev. There it is. Switch to the short choke. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a new UFC lightweight contender, ladies and gentlemen. His name is Kevin Lee. 
The Tony Ferguson fight was my first title fight. All, right, gentlemen. All these lights and that pressure just kind of boiled up inside of me. Beautiful scramble here. Tony is sliding that right knee up high. He is in trouble. He's got the arm on the outside, but he's going to pull the head. There's the tap. Tony Ferguson has done it. Tony Ferguson is the UFC interim lightweight champion of the world. That was the start of the ups and downs. The end of 2017 going into 2018 was definitely one of the lowest points. Losing the fight to Tony Ferguson, losing the title, all those opportunities, and then losing my coach right after. Robert Follis has been a stabilizing force for Kevin Lee. When Robert Follis died, he was left without a real head coach. It was a devastating loss for him. Him committing suicide made me question a lot of things. And it, it, it kind of reinforced a lot of things for me too. It reinforced my heart and my will and my desire to go on. It took a big toll on my career and that, that kind of showed through. I was able to bounce back and have some highlights. Kevin Lee wants to resume his rise to the top of the mountain. But it wasn't the end of the ups and downs. Oh, Kevin Lee is busted up. The now welterweight Kevin Lee gets a top five contender. That's very tight. Kevin Lee. Tap. Tap. Wow. Rafael Dos Anjos submits Kevin Lee. I had the highlight of my career after that against Gregor Gillespie. Get up! I'm just trying to ride the momentum of knocking him out. I'm offered the fight against Charles, and I think I underestimated him a lot. Straight away, Charles coming in with the unorthodox strikes. Ooh, gonna wash that neck. He's gonna Oli Vera that forces that the tap. Charles Oliveira, the wow. biggest win of his career, and Kevin Lee is unsure of what happens. The fight against Charles Oliveira was a very humbling moment. I learned a lot there, but I wasn't finished with that process yet. I come back, I start training with my brother. I shoot and my knee just pops out. I heard the, the sound and I'm kind of laying on my back and I just knew right away what, what was going on. Three months after Recover from the first surgery. A freak accident. I tripped, stood up too fast. As soon as I heard the sound, I, I, I knew what happened with the next one. My second knee now, I do the MRI and they tell me that it was torn. Just nothing but frustration, just anger. I had broke up with my girlfriend at the time. So I lived alone, blew out both my ACLs, so I couldn't train either. And the rest of the world shut down. 2020 to combine dealing with something on a, a mental and emotional level and then have to deal with something on a physical level as well. I think Kevin was in a pretty dark place. At those low points, you can almost forget what it's like to be at the high point. The practices of getting over the mental humps is realizing I'm not the high point and I'm not the low point either, that I'm somewhere in the middle of that. And then somewhere in the middle of that, I just love what I do. And I realize I want to compete, and I want to train, and I want to fight. Regardless of the outcome, I'm going to train my best, I'm going to do my best, and then whatever happens, happens. The journey is never over. For much of the year, I spent in rehab. I would have to get up, go to the UFC PI every day, twice a day. Keep your eyes on this guy. This is such a selfish sport that I forget that you need a big team around you. Good, Bryce, shake it out. We're trying to push the pace. I'm gonna be watching your heart rate. I'll let you know what speed I want you to hang around. A lot of the drills and things that I run through are going back to the voices that stand out that are positive to me. Good stuff, man. Thanks, brother. Pushing yourself through these things creates that mental fortitude within yourself. Kevin's confidence was rebuilt like everybody's, and that was with time. 
just getting back into the gym and, and seeing that they can do it again and compete at that level. So I'll step in the jab. You're going to mitt that jab. Mitt the jab, get your range first. It's going You'll right clip it. Good it works. Push. Yeah. yeah it's good push. I see a sense of purpose and a drive. He has the mindset and the work ethic to be successful in the sport. One, two, three, three. Nobody wants to go through the lows. Nobody wants to go through the losses. You don't want to make the mistakes, but I needed that. I needed those to push me to the next level in life. Get it, get it, get it, let's go! Not only have I been maturing as a fighter, but I've been maturing as a man, and I feel like that's the next phase of my career. If you ask me how I feel now, I just only feel excited, truly excited. I feel like a completely different person, and I'm just excited to show the world that. I've always seen myself as a UFC champion, and now it's time to realize it. Brazil has produced some of the most prolific fight stoppers in UFC history. Among the latest is Vicente Luque. At number two on the all-time welterweight stoppages list, the silent assassin draws inspiration from his fellow countrymen. Luque names his favorite Brazilian finishers in take five. Brazilian fighters are all really got a lot of heart and they're not gonna give up. They're gonna look for that win no matter what way. Uh, they gotta do it. And that's what I think the Brazilian spirit is about, you know, looking for the win no matter the cost. I'm UFC welterweight Vicente Luque and these are my top five Brazilian finishers. Come in at number five, Charles Oliveira. I think Charles, he's just amazing the way that he can put his ground game and make it work on MMA. He sometimes finishes from the bottom and he's not bothered to fight off his back and get big finishes. So I think that's amazing. And the amount of submissions he has is insane. So it, he had to be on this list. And there's the tap, Charles Oliveira. Yet another finish in the UFC. It's amazing also how Charles has so much history, he has done so much in the UFC, and he's just, you know, scratching his potential. Chandler retreats! Now Chandler is down! Charles Oliveira is the undisputed UFC lightweight champion! Number four, Big Nog. Big Nog had to be on the list because he's one of the most amazing Brazilian fighters. He's a legend and he has a lot of finishes and he's really diverse. So he's a grappling guy, so he's got good submissions, but he also has some great and amazing knockouts. He always found a way to win. That's what puts him on the list, that he's really versatile. He can get finishes standing up or on the ground and not leave it to the judges. A very big fight was Big Knock against Tim Sylvia. He's one of the best in the world. Guillotine and a cup and trail. Tim Sylvia, he's out of the circuit to the Oscars. Minotaur is the UFC interim. It was an amazing finish and he got the title. That's what he wanted to do, become a champion of Pride and also of UFC. One of the few to do that. My number three pick is Anderson Silva. Anderson for me in the list is one of the most unorthodox of all the finishers. He has always had an amazing level in striking. His finishes have always looked effortless. It looks like he's hitting guys with no power and he finished the fights. My favorite one has to be when he finishes Forrest Griffin, the way he was hitting Griffin, walking back. Look at Silva. I mean, that's just amazing. And again, he's out. He's out. And again, it's all over. Something that many people never really realize is how great the grappling game of Anderson Silva was. And he got big submissions, like the one against Dan Henderson, which is also another legend. And that comeback against Chael Sonnen. I mean, after four uh, hard rounds for Anderson Silva, I was sure that he was gonna lose that fight. He found a way to get the finish with that triangle choke. He's 
He was amazing all around, and he had a really underestimated ground game, but a high-level ground game. Anderson Silva! He's a master, a true martial arts master. Coming in at number two, Shogun Hua. Shogun had to be in the list. He's my favorite fighter. He's one of the guys that I, I always looked up when I was starting my career. And he has great finishes, really aggressive Muay Thai style, and also complete. He has submissions, he has knockouts, he, he does everything. So for me, is one of the greatest to ever finish fights. I think one of the big finishes is against Lioro Machida, and he didn't want to leave it to the judges. He went out there, did what he had to do in the first round, and got the title. It was really amazing to watch. Oh, he got rocked. Shogun he's with the full out. out. Mauricio Shogun, Shogun is out. He's he's out. out. He's out. UFC light heavyweight champion. At the number one spot, Vitor Belfort. Vitor is another guy that I always watched while I was growing up and becoming a fighter. He's a guy that has amazing hand speed. I've always looked at that and tried to get a little bit of that with his hand speed, his great boxing, and his amazing power. A big highlight is Luke Rockhold and, and Vitor Belfort, and that fight was amazing. The way that he finished Rockhold with that kick. I'm Vicente Luque, and those were my top five Brazilian finishers. Vitor Belfort getting it done with style points. That's a wrap for this episode. Get in touch and give us your thoughts online by using the hashtag UFC Connected. Until next time, I'm Megan O'Levy, and I'll see you at the fights.